But I think the at Dynamics IPO, or, 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 or almost IPO, oh. demonstrated there's a pent up demand uh, for technology IPOs, at least from my perspective. And there's a whole long line of, um, of other companies, uh, including Snap, which is supposed to come out in March or April, uh, which we make very exciting uh, IPOs, both on the consumer side and on the enterprise software side. When you look at the uncertainty around uh, the global regulatory environment, there have been a lot of uh, issues with the cloud, uh, what governments have access to data, where the data needs to be domiciled. Does that affect the types of companies that you look to invest in or how much money they're going to need in order to be successful if they're playing in that kind of an area? Uh, no, it doesn't really because the, the cloud is inexorable. You, everything is moving to the cloud and will continue to move to the cloud. I, I think it's proper that there should be regulations and, and, and data and privacy uh, um, are, are a big concern among uh, uh, both companies and consumers, uh, but that should not stop the onslaught of, of moves to the cloud. Earlier this morning, Cisco's CEO, Chuck Robbins, was on CNBC, and he said that tax reform not only is a good thing, but will lead to more M&A, potentially more stock buybacks, more dividend increases. Um, ultimately, that's a good thing for companies and for people who hold those stocks, but what's the likelihood you think that that activity starts to draw some scrutiny? Uh, the stock buyback part? Um, I mean, I think, you know, as you've seen, there's already, already been a lot of stock buybacks in the past couple of years on the part of, of all kinds of uh, cash-rich companies, including the tech companies that didn't used to do it, started to do it about a couple of years ago. So I think if we bring back uh, a couple trillion dollars worth of money that's just parked outside, not doing very much, uh, it will spur uh, not only more uh, pot potential buybacks, but also a lot more investing in the United States. You know, a lot was made during the campaign about tech's aversion to Trump and his policies, the rift between Silicon Valley and the Trump campaign, at least. Is that, is that warming because of things like repatriation, the possibility of bringing all that money home? It should. I'm not sure it is yet. Yeah. I think uh, Silicon Valley is still like in a little bit of a bubble. You know, they're, they're still kind of like in the opposition. And individually, people should feel the way they should feel. There's no question. But companies have a responsibility to work with any administration, including this one, particularly when it comes to uh, uh, regulations, immigration, which is a huge topic for us in, in technology. Uh, Silicon Valley has to engage. Uh, they can't just stay and live in their own little world. Yeah, you, you've seen some pose. Kara Swisher with her piece this past week arguing that tech should sort of be um, like jobs, you know, would have, would have done. Maybe just being a pain in the butt. I don't see how this is going to advance uh, anyone's cause. I mean, maybe if people will feel better individually, but it's certainly not going to help their companies or the shareholders in those companies. Eric, when it comes to infrastructure spending, uh, given that we're in the age of the Internet of Things, it seems that there's a big potential for tech to get a piece of that, making the argument that if you build sensors into these bridges, these roads, the maintenance costs will be a lot lower. Do you get the sense that tech is ready to make that pitch and that the Trump administration is maybe ready to listen? Well, that's my concern. My concern is that tech is, is still taking this kind of opposition view of, of, of the Trump administration as opposed to engaging and showing exactly what you're describing, which is it's not just building bridges or repairing our, our roads, whatever. We've got to put tech everywhere uh, in order for society to, to, to work much better. As you're, as you're talking, guys, uh, Mark Cuban tweeting, with all the dramatic changes coming in, in transportation, infrastructure dollars spent on roads, bridges will be misspent. We need to invest in infrastructure that supports and enables the future, not projects that tie us to a less competitive past. That, that's correct. Also, broadband deployment. You know, we, we're, we're not the number one country in broadband deployment. Those countries tend to be in, in Asia. Uh, so we need to do much better in broadband deployment. And, and I would include education in infrastructure because we're not teaching our kids, by and large, we're not teaching them. Right programming or coding and we need to do that and that to me is a major part of our infrastructure because that's the future of the country. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.